President Trump's rift with the NFL is only deepening with time. Less than 10 hours after Congressman Matt Gates came on our show and called for eliminating tax breaks for pro sports leagues, the president tweeted this, why is the NFL getting massive tax breaks while at the same time disrespecting our anthem, flag, and country? Change tax law! Exclamation point. What did he mean? Well, Chris Bedford is the editor-in-chief of the Daily Caller News Foundation. He just wrote a brand new book, which is hilarious and smart. It's called The Art of the Donald, Lessons from America's Philosopher-in-Chief. Chris Bedford joins us tonight. Chris Bedford, great to see you. Great to see you, Tucker. So you've really systematically thought through the president's operating philosophy. You've kind of broken it down into a lot of categories. But given the knowledge that you have, what do you make of that tweet this morning? Attacking, attacking the NFL? Yes. Well, he's, he's managed to hold this issue and make it a phenomenal thing. He, he's a great communicator. I've got a chapter in the book called How to Get Your Message Out, and it breaks it down into how basically Donald Trump does. One, he keeps it really simple. simple. It's about the flag. It's not about this. It's not about the police. It's not about Ferguson. It's not about free speech. It's about respecting the flag and standing for the military. Dude, yeah. you've you got to redefine things on your, on your terms. Don't let them do that. You have to attack, 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 and never relent. I think that's what we saw this morning with Trump yes. attacking the tax status of the NFL. And finally, you have to just bring it, bring it across, across the finish line, like exactly like he's done. Donald Trump is controlling this debate. He's basically won this debate. And the NFL now looks like a bunch of extremely wealthy. They are extremely wealthy, a $10 billion a year league. And they're going to lose this one, I think, based on the merits and based on how Donald Trump has changed this entire conversation. So you're taking the president's public statements and behavior and basically extracting from them a life philosophy and for every category of life, including food. So what, what are the, what's the, the sort of culinary philosophy of, of the president? Eat like a normal person. Eat what you want to eat. The entire time, Tucker, when we were following the candidates around Iowa, New Hampshire, New York, you see John Kasich trying to eat this nasty food out of a deli with gravy going everywhere. You see John Kerry trying to eat pizza with a fork and knife or, or get the wrong cheese in his cheesesteak. You never saw that with Donald Trump. We saw Donald Trump walk into a steakhouse in New Hampshire, and we saw him the next morning walk into a diner in New Hampshire on Election Day in a fancy Italian suit with a red trucker hat on. And all these working class folks and New Hampshire voters who were there to see him, they fell in love. And after the cameras were over and after you and Fox and Friends had moved on, he still sat there eating pancakes and yucking it up with these people because he's comfortable in his own skin. He'll eat fast food. He'll wear a nice suit. And no one ever doubts him for that because that's who he is. He's a legitimate person and it's not poll tested. No, it's not. He eats three musketeers, which I judge a little bit. I mean, I obviously go with Snickers, but whatever. Um, interesting. So do you think if you applied the lessons that you've taken from his life, that you'd be more successful? Like, what, would you, what would you be like if you put the Trump life philosophy into practice? I think he'd be much more successful. The reason for this, the reason why Trump, I think, is so successful is he hasn't started out with a lot of the same, uh, it's a lot of the same great strengths that he did against some of his, his, some of his opponents had. For example, Jeb Bush, he had millions of dollars, he had all the consultants you could need, he had the ground game, he had the ad game. Donald Trump didn't have that stuff. He decided to go a different route. He decided to change the game, he threw out the rule book. Pundits and politicos and politicians couldn't figure out a single step of it, and he beat them. And everyone says, you know, and it's true, he started out with some money when he came to Manhattan. He didn't start out with skyscraper Manhattan money, he started out with outer boroughs, real estate money, and some political connections. Everyone doubted him. He broke the rules. He made it his own way. He built glass higher than was expected. And because of that, Donald Trump, by going around and, and, and capitalizing on his strengths, has managed to rise to the most famous person in the world, a big goal of his, president of the U.S., head of the GOP, uh, a billionaire with a good family. There's some lessons to learn. He liked your book. He tweeted about it this morning. I, know, I, know, I think it was his first of a wave of early morning tweets, but it was about your book. Chris Bedford author of the new book on Trump's life philosophy. Great to see you. Great to see you.